I think we have six years to make as much money as possible. Usually after the halving, there's this consolidation period, down 20%, chopping around, usual stuff. And then it starts gathering, 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 and then it goes crazy. This is going to be the biggest, largest, fastest accumulation of wealth in all human history. And that's why I keep saying, don't fuck this up. That's why I have a long-term time horizon. That's why I don't trade around this. Just let it do its job. So here's when we talk about doing its job. Raul Pal, CEO of Real Vision and former Goldman Sachs executive, shares an updated forecast regarding the future of crypto and digital finance for the coming years. In his recent broadcast, Pal explains exactly why these coming years are the most crucial for investing. He stresses that these years are the best time to invest before all disruptive technologies, such as blockchain and AI, explode. Pal is particularly quite optimistic about the future of blockchain and cryptocurrency. He predicts that the total value of all cryptocurrencies will reach a massive $100 trillion by 2032 to 2034, which he believes would be the fastest wealth creation ever seen. He even argues that cryptocurrency has historically yielded better returns than traditional investments like stocks, even considering the significant ups and downs crypto experiences. Let us now view clips of Raul Pal as he explains these important points. Give this video a like to show your support and subscribe to the channel to always be updated with the latest crypto news. Thanks and enjoy. This is global liquidity. In summer, liquidity starts increasing. Obviously, 2020, because of the pandemic, it went bananas. But 2016, 2012, these were good periods for liquidity. And guess what? Crypto, technology, they all rose. Then you get into fall. Fall is often when the real fireworks happen. Liquidity keeps pumping and then eventually tops out into winter. That's when you get the corrections, the crypto down cycles. So we've got the best two parts of the cycle to come. Obviously, the best entry was at the bottom of winter. That's when I was buying um, Solana, Ethereum, um, all back then. And then I've obviously switched around. So I'm pretty much 100% Solana right now outside of small meme stuff and other bits and pieces because Solana, the Solana Bitcoin cross chart, Solana ETH cross chart looks so compelling that I'm like, if my job here is to make as much money as possible, I'm just going to own the thing that I think is going to go up the most. So that was the view I had. You will have a different way, but please don't get stuck into a narrative. You're still stuck in some fucking token from three cycles ago because somebody's telling you that it's it's going to definitely be the next big thing. It's not big thing after three cycles, two cycles. It's not going to be the big thing. So just try and make money. I'm trying to allow you not to fuck this up. Don't fuck this up is the key mantra. When you've got a liquidity cycle ahead of you like this, please take advantage of it. The next part of that is the NASDAQ. Maybe you're not crypto people, but God Tech does well in crypto summer. We had an astonishing year last year of long tech all year. Astonishingly good year in tech. And it's only going to get crazy. And those who, and I'll talk about tech a lot later when I'm talking about um, about where this is all going um, and why you've only got six years to save yourselves uh, before the world gets a little crazy. But in tech, it is fall that is the big period. The later part of the season is when it goes really bananas. That's after the election. This is the same as the election cycle. The election years are in yellow, then the post election years. Um, that tends to happen. So liquidity is going to pump into the system. It's going to come from different measures. I'm sure there's going to be questions about this. Okay, NASDAQ, crypto, because you're all crypto junkies. And the reason you're crypto junkies is it makes more money than anything else. I get it. Um, that's the point. That's the point of investing is to make as much money as possible. Um, so yellow tends to be, in the summer, tends to be decent. But you get, there's been two cycles where fall was bananas total bananas and then you had the last fall in 2021 which was less so it's because the liquidity came earlier in 2020 so we don't know how it's going to play out but this is how it should play out here's a chart from exponential age asset management which is my fund of hedge funds so it's an asset management firm that invests in the world's best hedge funds to capture this trend of going from two and a half billion dollars where the market cap is now to 10 trillion we're at 10 to 15 trillion where it is this cycle, and then to 100 trillion where I think it goes by, let's say, 2032, 2034, something like that. This is going to be the biggest, largest, fastest accumulation of wealth in all human history. And that's why I keep saying, don't fuck this up.
That's why I have a long-term time horizon. That's why I don't trade around this. Just let it do its job. So here's when we talk about doing its job. So we look at the, the, the bottom, the highest return section and the lowest return section. So out of the three years, crypto spring, macro spring, summer and fall, crypto is the best performing asset in the world. Bar none. In the next year, in fall, it's the worst performing asset. Okay, so that's what you get. But when you look at the accumulative returns, NASDAQ since 2011 has done 769%. That's amazing. 17% a year. Well, Bitcoin's done 20 million percent at 139% annualized. Ethereum, 324% at 146% annualized. And Solana, which is a shorter history, 8,300% at 203% annualized. These are bonkers. These are bonkers returns, considering in the middle of those, you've had several down 80% corrections, which is why even the big corrections, how terrible they are, they're all noise. If you just hold on, you're generating between 140 and 200% a year. I mean, Solana's at 240% and it went down 94% in 2022. That's how good this asset is. It's an alien asset class. And I know I bleat a a lot about it and a lot of you still not yet comfortable with it, but I I can't help you anymore that I'm trying to help you to see what this is. It's a fucking gift. It's the greatest gift we've ever been given. So here's the final thing. This is the banana zone. Why it's called the banana zone. It's because the chart, A, looks like a banana, and B, everything goes bananas. And that comes after the halving, after this consolidation, it does this. Will it be identical? Will Is 300 grand the price target? Whatever. I don't know. But it will go bananas, unless something dramatic changes. According to Pal, global liquidity cycles have had noticeable correlations with market movements, including in cryptocurrencies such as Solana, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Liquidity typically increases during specific periods, like summer, leading to market uptrends and decreases during winter, resulting in corrections or downtrends. He notes the importance of recognizing these cycles for making informed investment decisions. Pal stresses that these coming years are not periods to waste time. To him, there is great potential for massive wealth accumulation in the upcoming years due to the market dynamics he discussed. While crypto is volatile, Pal shows impressive historical returns compared to NASDAQ. He emphasizes that even with corrections, holding crypto for the long term has yielded significant gains. Solana is Pal's main cryptocurrency of choice, as he foresees the cryptocurrency outperforming even Bitcoin and Ethereum soon. How about you? Which cryptocurrencies are you most bullish on? Let us know in the comments. Now, let's return to more insights from Raul Pal. And so... I do an enormous amount of work. There's literally thousands of pages of research from Julian Bittle and myself on this. So this is not just some flippant comments. We'd see liquidity rising going forwards. There's there's sources of liquidity everywhere from the Fed cutting rate from the Treasury draining the the general account to the Fed cutting QT to um, to potentially um, the Treasury offering some liquidity provisions to China so they can manage the debt deflation. They're starved of dollars. Something with Japan who also needs dollars because there's, there's, um, you know, their currency has been collapsing. There is a lot of opportunities. The Europeans are going to cut rates. The UK are going to cut rates. There's a lot of opportunity for liquidity. The Fed may, let's say, spin up a special purpose vehicle to get rid of commercial real estate from the banks. Who knows? But the cowbell is coming. Listen out for it. It's already started. So. The banana zone is all cowbell and markets going parabolic. So hopefully that gives you some understanding of what I think lies ahead. Will it be perfect? No. Does it chop around here for another month or two? Could do. Does it finish? If I look at the previous um, cycles, two of them uh, ended in the third week of May, the consolidation, and then went. And the other one was July. 2020, but 2020 was weird because we had the pandemic in the middle. It was kind of a screwy cycle. So I don't know. It's close. They all like that making perfect wedge patterns, all of that. Everything else seems good. What's also great about 
macro spring, uh, sorry, yeah, macro summer and fall, is that you can basically take any asset it's going to go up. So all commodities, those of you who love commodities, copper's done well, it'll go up, gold will go up, oil eventually will do, um, doesn't feel great right now, oil stocks will, mining stocks will, um, all cyclical plays will. Tech stocks, semiconductors, they all do phenomenally well. Crypto does so you can be the moron, which is a nice way to be in markets. Nobody wants to try and overthink stuff. And you, pretty much anything you buy will go up. But some things will go up more than others. That's that's how I look at the world. Everything's everything's fucking correlated. Everything. The everything code cycle of the four-year debt refi cycle means that everything gets correlated. A few assets lead, crypto and tech. Others follow the business cycle. The business cycle's bottoming. So they all bottom, but they're all correlated. Everything's correlated. So for me, I like to keep everything really moronically simple. If everything's correlated, then there is no such thing as diversification. In fact, I made a big presentation to big family family office network, front of you know lots of very famous US gigantically wealthy families, and I, my presentation is diversification is dead. And I just said, listen. So all you do, if that's the case. You just look at all the charts, and we got to, hey, the best performing stock market in the world is the NASDAQ. Isn't it amazing? Technology, you'll get technology. And they're like, yeah, okay, we're investing in this. We can see the AI revolution, the robots, and everything else. We, we get it, technology. I'm like, yeah. Divide the NASDAQ chart by, the, by Bitcoin, and NASDAQ is down 99.93%. I'm like, you're in the wrong asset. It's as simple as that. It's a super massive black hole. The system is rigged against us. Asset prices keep going up. Wages don't go up. Everybody's polarized. Everybody hates each other. You throw in immigration, global trade. You throw in aging populations. You throw in AI, robotics. Right? This is not easy for anybody. And everybody just feels like it's out of their control. And I get it. But you've been given the gift. Crypto is the gift. And all you have to do is not fuck this up. Overall, Pal recommends that people invest in cryptocurrency for the long term and believe in this anticipated surge of money flow coming soon. He sees Solana as a promising option, but also reminds us that these are his personal views. The cryptocurrency market is known for its instability, so there's no guarantee how things will play out in the future. Take Pal's words to heart and also do your thorough research to figure out your best investment strategy during these times. Do you agree with Raul Pal's bullish outlook on cryptocurrency? Why or why not? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments below and continue the discussion. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful discussions on cryptocurrency and finance. Your engagement helps us continue providing valuable content to our audience. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos as we go over the latest news in crypto finance, technology, and everything in between. Until next time, happy investing.